After each oil has been identified by GCMS, uh, further identified by FTIR, we actually test the physical parameters of each oil. And then the physical testing is a compilation of a, quite a few different tests. Uh, optical rotation, in which we use a polarimeter, and that tests the chirality of the molecule. Uh, sometimes chiral molecules can be missed on GCMS, so that's another verification. A refractive index, which is done by a refractometer, because each essential oil twists light in a different way. And then the specific gravity, which basically measures the difference in weight between water and uh, the oil. The other piece to the physical testing that we do is the organoleptics. Each oil is unique and it has a specific appearance and aroma and color, and we document those at every receipt of all the samples that we receive. And that is part of our release criteria for each oil. Part of our contamination testing we have uh, on our essential oils is each one will go through a variety of microbiology tests. In the micro lab we test for total plate count and yeast and mold and salmonella and E. coli and pseudomonas. The microbiologist will swab and plate each media uh, and then they'll actually count the plates using some specific microbiology techniques. From these tests, we can actually measure the contamination that has been possible in any part of the manufacturing process, all the way back to distillation. The autoclave is a very important and unique instrument in every microbiology lab. What that does is it sterilizes the media used for testing microorganisms as well as sterilized product that has been tested. We also have a microscope in the microbiology lab in which we use for identifying uh, microorganisms that we may see or grow on some of our petri dishes. Most of the things that we do here are in an effort to ensure the quality. We have a very strong standard of quality and we want to make sure that we meet that. The minute the oil arrives, within 24 hours we will take that oil into a sampling room and we will pull samples out of that and we do various tests to check that oil in its chemical makeup against the specification that doTERRA has set to our suppliers. Then the oil may sit in our warehouse for a couple weeks before we fill it in our production line, so it will stay in its sealed container. We will pull samples at the beginning, the middle, and the end of that production run. We will take those samples and we will go and do even more testing than we did prior. So then, those test results come back before that oil can even leave this building. Our QA team won't release the oil from this building unless those results come back in and says that the oil is in spec, that it was not contaminated in any way throughout the process. We verify that its quality and that its grade is what it's supposed to be, and then our QA team will sign off on it and allow us to release that product to be shipped. In the lab we have an ICPMS. ICP stands for inductively coupled plasma, and then MS stands for mass spectroscopy. So it's a different form of mass spectroscopy in which we actually atomize our sample down to its elemental form and measure its mass and come up with quantification of the elements within the oil. The instrument is also used for uh, measuring minerals or any other elements that are in some of our other product lines, such as our dietary supplements or our nutritional supplements. GCMS, or Gas Chromatography Mass Spectroscopy, is the workhorse machine we have in the lab. It helps identify each essential oil. It aids in determination of the purity and the strength, as well as the composition of each essential oil. It'll also help identify potential contaminants that shouldn't be in an oil. GCMS is made up of two distinct instruments that are used in tandem together. First is the GC, or the gas chromatogram, and what that does is you take your sample and it volatilizes the sample, and from there the sample is actually separated from each other, and large molecules come out first, followed by smaller molecules. From there, once it's separated, it actually goes right into the MS, which is the mass spectrometer, and the molecules are then fragmented with electricity. Uh, those fragments are actually measured by mass. Each molecule is specific and it fragments specifically, and so the detector can actually tell what mass and from there tell us the molecule.
The FTIR, or Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrometer, what that does is it works with our GCMS and it helps us in identifying each essential oil that we test. It actually measures the infrared spectrum that is unique to each essential oil. It looks at it a little differently and it shoots uh, infrared light into the sample and it actually measure if there's been any changes in any part of the manufacturing process. FTIR is a quality control test used to identify the structural components that make up the constituents within an essential oil. A sample of essential oil is placed inside a specialized machine and an infrared light is passed through the sample. Depending on the chemical structure of the essential oil constituents, the light will be absorbed in a unique pattern. Because each essential oil has unique chemistry, the absorption pattern will be different for each oil. The pattern can also vary depending on the quality of the oil. This test is used to analyze the composition of an essential oil and ensure that it contains proper chemistry. Steam distillation is a process used to collect essential oils. GCMS is a quality control test that reveals which constituents are present in an essential oil and at what amounts. This is important information for determining if the potency and purity of an essential oil meets quality control standards. Here is a beaker full of golf and ping pong balls that together represent the raw plant material. Each colored ping pong ball represents a different volatile aromatic compound. The golf balls represent other compounds found in the plant material that are structurally too large or heavy to be collected by steam distillation and will not be found in the essential oil. Examples of these compounds are hormones, vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Now water is poured into the beaker representing the process of steam distillation. Only certain balls rise to the surface, just as only volatile aromatic compounds are collected during steam distillation. The floating balls represent the pure essential oil yield. The essential oil is then tested with GCMS testing. This process separates the oil into its constituent parts by sending a sample of the oil through a machine called a gas chromatograph. Within the machine is a narrow tube called a column. Each constituent moves through the tube at a different rate depending on its mass and chemical structure. A detector at the end of the tube measures when and how much of the compound exits the tube. This provides a detailed report on which constituents are present in the essential oil and at what levels. In order to ensure therapeutic value, the essential oil must have a chemical profile that matches a known standard of other high quality essential oils. In this demonstration, this standard is represented by the numbers on the sides of the beakers. If the amount of constituents collected matches the amount of constituents expected, the essential oil has the proper chemical profile to ensure a consistent therapeutic effect. This batch would be accepted. However, if the amount of constituents does not match, the batch would be rejected because it does not have the chemical profile known to ensure therapeutic effects.